we begin today with Just Jordan and his coconut head haircut having friend playing CoolMathGames.com. In all of my years of watching TV, this is up there for the fakest video game playing ever. Jordan's sister comes in cosplaying as a praying mantis or something and she's sick of watching Just Jordan play this fake ass game and she instead wants to watch this fake ass movie. Twinkle Fairy Dance Party? I get y'all needed a generic name for copyright purposes, but starting off the show like this is diabolical. Just Jordan wants to show Momo some kung fu dance moves while he kicks Tony's twinkle fairy butt. And you probably shouldn't Google that unless you want to. I really don't care, it's your internet. Momo goes yelling for their mom, Evolve Vanessa from Bernie Mac Show. She tells him to get up, get out, and get that mini clip from Wish Ass Game off her LCD. They've been playing all day and I just know that room gotta be funky. She tells them to put those video games down and get their squabble stat up in real life. Just Jordan's mom is off. She's got a date. The thoughts of his Freudian ties being severed upsets Just Jordan enough that the salvia that he must have smoked earlier starts giving him flashbacks. He exclaims that moms don't go on dates. But if you've ever been on Hinge, then you would know that that's a falsity. Just Jordan says moms are only good for cooking and taking care of him. Just is basically Ladera Heights Jody. It turns out the date is with Just Jordan's grandpa, Andrew Bynumface. I definitely said that exact joke in the first Just Jordan video I had, but damn it, I cannot think of a better one. This dude really just looks like Andrew Bynum's dad. After some tasteful B-roll of the LA streets, they cut to Papa Bynum's fish and grill, where Justin and Tony come in dressed like they joined Heaven's Gate. They look like dorks, and if you know anything about buses in LA, ask her and watch her. Oh, cuz. Hey, hey, you're rough, cuz. You can only imagine how it would go. Now, Tangy needs a ride. And now Momo needs something. These kids have no consideration for being annoying as hell while their mother is trying to work. She now has to abandon her job to take Just Jordan to learn how to get beat up. At that moment, Andre Bynum sees this beautiful black queen enter his place of business and he starts hearing harps and D'Angelo songs playing in his head. He tells her that he thought that little girl's parents were coming to pick her up, not her young nanny. He's gonna need to see some ID. Pretty mid game, but it works, so we gotta let him cook. It's time for Just Jordan's karate lesson, and his mom is nervous because Jordan is a mark. This girl over here is tapping from an arm bar, and Shorty just keeps on yanking. Husamal Paharis is somewhere Millie rocking. Tony uses this as an opportunity to distract the ref while this girl's arm is getting torn out the socket. Not cool. Jordan used this as an opportunity to mouth breathe and curl a singular chuck. Somebody come get his ass. Tanji must have heard me because she joins the dojo to protect these nincompoops from themselves. Their instructor is this light-skinned fellow, Shamar Moore's little brother, uh, Shamal. He lets it be known that he isn't strapped, but he has no problems producing more hands than a clock factory. I don't need no gun. I beat the shit out one of these niggas, boy. <laughs> then he starts voguing. Just Jordan just wants to know when he can learn how to beat somebody's ass like A-Rap music on the NPC. To quote him, <clears throat> Bruce Lee is back, but this time he's black. The canned laughter loved that one, but I'll give it a resounding and eh, not really convinced. Neither is Shamal, so he tells Jordan to try to kick him. On the first attempt, Jordan looks like Charlie Brown trying to kick a football, and on the second attempt, he tries to put just into a comma. The shape of punctuation, not the long nap. Tony is not concerned at all. He's trying to holler at someone, but Tangi is playing defense at a Tyson factory, if you know what I mean. Shamal wasn't content with slamming Jordan, so now he's trying to do the same to just mom. He's leading her by the nape of her ass like a dude saying excuse me at the club, then just snatches her up like he's about to perform a German suplex. She ain't even in the class. She needs to donkey kick him in his uprights if he's just gonna leave himself open. That's how I know he ain't actually trying to help her. Luckily, she appears to know judo, a superior martial art for fighting. They stare into each other's eyes and not only does the studio audience go, ooh, 
so does the audience of students whose parents pay for this class where their teacher's trying to grab on this parent's ass. Not cool, Shamal. Back at the house, Papa Bynum has some hard bottoms and a fedora on, so you know he's got a date. Right when he's walking out, Shamal is at the door with some flowers. Bynum uses that as an opportunity to steal a couple for his honey dip. Game is to be told, never sold. Just attempts to press Shamal, and I swear this is Nickelodeon baby boy. If Shamal ends up butt naked in the kitchen cooking breakfast, I'm taking this to copyright court. Evolve Vanessa comes out looking like a respectable yet ravishing black queen, but Just Jordan gets his 1930s misogyny on and basically calls her a whore for showing off too much hand and elbow. Just attempts to cover her charlatan arms, but she tells him to worry about cosplaying as Allen Iverson if he got casted for Kung Fu Hustle instead of worrying about what the hell she got going on. Just is off the juice, so he starts open-eyed lucid dreaming. Now I finally get what Absol meant when he asked if you ever been conscious in a coma. The long nap, not the punctuation meant for short pauses. Just's astral projection is hating. First, she didn't take care of him hand and foot. Now, she has the audacity to go on a date. Not only that, but someone he knows, he's ready to put his weak ass hands on someone. More specifically, someone smaller than him. It's later and just Jordan is fuming with how later it is. He starts yelling before the door is open, but it's just Bynum and Momo. Just is complaining about how his mom ain't home yet, but Bynum lets him know that she's just downstairs talking to her date. Evolve Vanessa walks in and just asks her if she knows what time it is. And she replies, time to take his Calvin Cambridge if he put on a pair of Converse instead looking ass to bed. Back at the restaurant, Bynum is committing acts of cupcakery and Momo is hating. She's thinking of ways to break them up. That gives Jordan the idea to join in the course of hateration. Back at the dojo, Tony learned how to harass women from watching his instructor do it in front of the class. Not cool. Tangi saves this poor girl from Tony's bowl cut. Tangi shows her prowess as a true yoke master by putting Tony in a quick chicken wing, then Jazzy Jeffing him across the room. Tangi even steals his partner, which to be fair, was never his in the first place. Jordan walks up and everyone is laughing at him. Word on the street is, Shamal is dating his mom. Just Jordan is Crush Jordan. Shamal walks in and he wants to know if anyone wants to spar with him. Just Jordan been wanting to beat his ass since Shamar Moore hosted Soul Train. Jordan starts off by winding up and telegraphing a punch. Shamal catches it and puts him in handcuffs. Jordan responds with a backhand, but he just ends up getting dumped on his ass. Just yells about getting his family dishonored and goes for a flying kick but ends up almost snapping his spine with the miss. Jordan is clutching onto Shamal's leg, probably so he stops kicking his ass. Shamal asks what the problem is and just tells him that his mom and dad are getting back together so he should just fall back. Shamal says okay and thanks Jordan and homie really got duped by a 14 year old. Back at the house, Just and Momo are playing Twinkle Fairy Dance Dance Revolution. Bynum comes and scoops up Momo so they can go out on a date again. Just is worried why his mom is so dressed up and she lets him know that she's got another date. She receives a call from Shamal and he ends up canceling their date. Jordan tries to hide his guilt by playing fairy dance whatever and tries to lie like old soap when his mom asked if he told Shamal that she was getting back together with his dad. He explains that technically he didn't lie because it was possible. She lets it be known that that ain't happening. Finally, he admits that in reality, he's embarrassed that his karate instructor is dating his mom. She apologizes and tells him that she just wanted some adult conversation. If you were surrounded by these hyperactive kids all day, that's all you would want too. Back at work, Evolve Vanessa is cleaning tables when she hears a ring at the door knock. It's Shamal. Jordan gives him a call and told him to come on over. Just at that moment, walks in with platters of food and champagne and all types of baller shit for the two to have a nice evening. He even got heart-shaped steaks on top of mashed potatoes. The vibe is immaculate, I cannot lie. Right then, Boohoo Bynum Face comes in all woe be gone. Apparently his girl broke up with him. Momo admits to Jordan that it's her fault and just tells her that sometimes kids just need to mind their own business. 
Jordan knows that he has to get her back because haters shouldn't be in the way of true love. They're all gathered around the dinner table and Bynum does a toast to their dates, putting up with their badass kids. Jordan must have gotten Shamal's glass of dark liquor mixed up with his because he has another out of body experience. His conscience admits that he overreacted earlier. And besides, if Shamal becomes his stepdad, then he has free karate lessons for life. 